Good evening, boys. Douglas here. Today, I'm going to take you step by step through my 80 tick runner on the ES futures back on March 2nd. Now, one thing I want you to note is we did this play with book map only. I was not using any bar charts, uh, no outside sources for structure or setups or anything like that. All we were doing was looking at pure order flow within book map. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of these details because if you've never seen Bookmap before, it can be quite confusing. But uh, once you know what these things are showing you, it's it's not as confusing. So let's go back to uh, 8.30 open right here. This is Central Time. I'm on Central Time, so this is when the market opens for me. And you can see that price is traveling down. Now, the blue bubbles are uh, consolidated buys. This is just telling you there was more buying than selling, aggressive buying than selling in that, that area means market orders. And then uh, the red bubbles are more aggressive selling than buying in those areas, okay? So that's easy enough. These highlighted levels of liquidity. Now these are the resting orders. We were talking about market orders with the bubbles. Now these are the resting orders. Okay, these are the people that are waiting in the book to get filled passively. And the more highlighted the area, the more um, traders, the more contracts are waiting there to be filled. Now a lot of times these areas act as support or resistance. And even if they get broken and taken apart, uh, if price tracks back to that previous level, a lot of times that uh, that level can again act as support or resistance, even if price dropped right through them and, and filled them immediately. And so uh, as price was going down over the morning, uh, right in here, you can see when we get to this high level of liquidity around this 845 marker, uh, we had uh, this blue uh, line here represents iceberg orders. Okay, these are hidden orders in the book from big players. Retail traders cannot make these orders. And in the past, we had no idea where these orders were, when they triggered. Uh, but thanks to Bookmap, we can see them now once they have fired. Okay, we can't see them uh, in the future, but we can see them as soon as they execute, they appear in real time. Okay, this is not past data. Okay, as soon as that um, iceberg triggers, it'll show up in Bookmap. And it was a, there was a big one here. There was 635 triggering off here. Up here, we're working on one uh, about 726 currently. Now, this red line here with this dip, uh, these are stop runs. So yes, Bookmap shows you real live stop runs as well. So not only uh, did we have a stop run here of 370, but right after the stop run, we get buy icebergs pumping in, and this is at a high level of liquidity. So this actually uh, would have been a decent area to be looking long in. Now, I did not play this long here. Uh, this last line, this green one, uh, once it dips down here, it turns a little bit red and then comes back green. Uh, that is the CVD. So this is the cumulative uh, over time volume of the market orders or the aggressive orders. So these bubbles here, if you add them all up, uh, this is the sum total of them over time is that line. Okay, all these things are important. They all come into play. And then this last thing here, I drew this in myself. Uh, because this is a spot gamma level. This was uh, a level two, which is a, a decent size level for spot gamma. And it was sitting at this size um, or at 3897 uh, in the book. Now these are pre-drawn on the chart. Unfortunately, when I'm doing replays, it doesn't show them. So I have to draw them on there. But uh, just to give you an idea, Here's the screenshot I took at the time and I marked it up with uh, what was going on. Uh, you can see the L2 was there. There was a couple other spot gamma levels as well, but the L2 was the one I was looking for. And I was anticipating playing that as resistance uh, all morning long. Okay, so I was waiting for price to get back to that, uh, that L2 and that L2 to ask, act as resistance. Now, spot gamma is... Um, it's a view of where the, the highest level of options are located in the SPY and the SPX, okay? And then they translate that into where that price would be in futures. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, I totally recommend Spot Gamma. You would be amazed at how well it works. So just know that that is a, a high level of, of option players, okay? Open options, interest. And what happens around those levels, at least the theory is, is that that's when big players need to start hedging their bets 
and they're using futures to hedge their bets. Okay. So that's why those are important. So let's get that back down. So we're going to play this out. And we're going to, of course, speed things up dramatically. Now, what you're seeing here is a new uh, beta testing from Bookmap. Uh, it's already changed quite a bit uh, since this since this um, play that I made. <laughs> they're changing the icons. They're changing different things. But uh, this is showing you these iceberg orders happen on the chart itself. They even show you when they're still active. Like this one was detected here. And then it was still active all the way and then triggered again here. So before I would have thought these were two separate icebergs, but in fact, it was one iceberg that uh, triggered, but it wasn't completely filled and then came back and then got hit again. So I can realize that this is actually one big play and not two separate plays. It's quite brilliant. Love it. Um, and they're still improving it. So as you can see, more icebergs are coming in. So let's keep playing this sucker out here. Yeah, now highlighted level of liquidity was broken. It came down to the next level, highlighted level here, and those icebergs keep firing off and keep getting taken out. But that was a big one there. That was 1,200, 1,200 hidden orders that you would not have known existed without Bookmap. Just got triggered there. Okay, so at this point in time when I'm watching this, um, I don't know that it's going to come back up here. Okay, that it's going to come back up to this L2 level. But that's just what's in my mind. If it comes back up here, this is where I want to play. Now with these big icebergs, a lot of times those guys can completely reverse the market. So I had to be careful that it wasn't going to bust through the L2s and go on. But uh, as you'll see, there's a reason why I was not that worried about it. So keep on moving here. And you can see how cool this this program is. Um, so we come down, we take out this other highlighted area. And if you drop down below, no more highlighted areas. So you could think, you know, one play here would be like, well, I think maybe business is done. There's no other players waiting down here, at least large uh, amounts of players. We had icebergs coming in, buying up this dip. Uh, so maybe this is a good time to take a long, uh, for example. And then with these bubbles, you can see, you know, what's actually taking place. Like, all right, some buyers stepped in, some buyers, some more buyers stepped in. Now they transferred to more sellers and so forth. Uh, it's, it's quite cool. But don't get information overload. Because you're going to see the good stuff happen here in a minute. The one thing important about these bubbles that you'll see coming up is uh, their, their size is relative to how many contracts happen there. So these little bubbles like 169 happen there, this bigger bubble 846 happen there. Awesome information, awesome information. Ah, I almost forgot all these squiggly lines here, these spaghetti lines. Uh, this is deviations away from the VWAP. This is the VWAP is this uh, highlighted one. The white ones are just one standard deviation, two standard deviations away. I use those just as structure, just so I can get a visual on where price has been and where, you know, it might top out or bottom out at. Now, what I'm really paying attention to at this point in time is I've got two things going on. One, I see these big icebergs, okay? So I'm thinking, well, maybe these guys want to push price up and then price could keep on going for the rest of the day. That's possible. But another thing that can happen is if price does come back down and it gets through this level again, you've got a guy sitting there with 1,200 contracts plus 700 plus another 635. I mean, that is a lot of contracts. You know, we're well over 2,000 contracts. And if price goes against him, uh, the theory goes that, and it's not just a theory because I see it happen all the time, that at some point that dude's going to puke out. He's going to want to get out of his buy position if he's wrong. And then that just pushes price lower faster. And that's kind of the ride that we ended up catching. So now we're getting to that L2 level. 
Keep bringing that across here. Now we're getting to that L2 level. And so I'm thinking, okay, we're in, we're in my zone. We're in my zone and the cumulative, uh, the CVD, cumulative volume delta has been dropping. All right, it's picking up a little bit there. But it took quite some time. You know, see how high price, oh, there we go. I'm gonna pause it now. Okay, so you see how high price has come and the cumulative volume delta wasn't really rising too much. And then it started picking up here, but after we hit this, this is 1,500 cells basically right here. Currently it's clocking at a 1,400, but 1,400 cells out of the blue at the spot gamma level where we think that the big players are gonna hedge, all right? That crushes the CVD down. So what we see is over time, if we come back, back here, over time, you can see that aggressive sellers have been dominating the market, right? They keep pushing the CVD down because there's more aggressive sellers in the market than aggressive buyers. Okay, we're waiting for it to get back to the spot gamma level. All of a sudden, this big dump comes in. Uh, it's currently actually saying 1800 now, and then it gets up over 2000, I believe. Kind of depends on how far out you zoom. Yeah, so yeah, 1988, so close enough to 2000, right? So, so we have 1988 contracts sell right here at our spot gamma level. And so at that point, especially with the CVD telling me that the aggressive sellers have been in control anyway, I'm thinking, okay, I think that this iceberg player here is in trouble. I'm thinking that he's going to be in trouble. He's not going to be able to support this. And then if we get past him, we could really have a good run. Now you can't express, you know, expect price to just take off like a rocket ship. Sometimes it does, but we have to let it play out. So it comes back, it comes back to that level two again. And if you'll be patient with me and just watch this play, um, you'll see what ends up happening in the end. Testing that level again. Now I got in, um, I got in around here originally and took a small, uh, a small winner. And then it came back and took out my runner. All right. But the setup hadn't changed. And so I end up getting back in again. And so while that's playing out, so right now we're in this zone. You can see this little triangle maybe here. Okay. So we, uh, we sold here and then price drops here and we get out and then it comes back out and takes me out. So that's what these little triangles are. And then it'll come up and then it comes back to the, my VWAP, my structure. And then I sell again. I get a small scalp just to protect myself basically. And then the whole thing breaks down. Okay. So that happens at about 9.22. Yeah. And I've got these notes here. So I was looking for shorts at spot gamma level two all morning long, large buy icebergs that come in, but 2000 cell bubble at L2 gave me conviction. CVD also down all morning. So I drew this little white line to show you that the CVD was crashing all morning long. We even get more buy icebergs that are gonna come in, a 1300 and a 1200 after that other previous 1300, which we know was even bigger than the 1300. And uh, so they just, they. He was trying to prop it up. Maybe it might've been the same player trying to prop it up. Maybe another player came in and wanted to prop it up. I don't know, but they got whooped. Okay. And then I get that 20 point, uh, 20 points exit. All right. 20 points, 80 ticks. Okay. There we go. So this is when that other big iceberg comes in. 1200. And as you can see, there's still some of it active, 
That's how cool that bookmap program is. You can see that the big player is still active in there. Let's scoot this forward. Price comes back. CVD is still dropping. Let's get a bigger zoom out. So to start the day, we had about 2,673 positive on the CVD. All right. And then as aggressive sellers kept dominating the market, uh, we're currently down to negative 2,500 on the CVD. So it's pretty easy to see that the aggressive sellers were winning, even though these uh, big bad iceberg boys were trying to do their thing. And, you know, for all I know, maybe, maybe they got in here and then got out up here. I don't know what they're doing. I don't really care, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm banking on their level getting crushed and then the market puking. So this is when I get in again, I think. When I sell again, let's take a look at that. Yep, so that's right when I sold again. It's right there. And then to make a long story short. That's the aftermath. So it actually continued on past even where I got out. All right, so that's, this was that 2,000 sell bubble at our level. Remember, we had got in, it came back, took us out. We got in again about right here, took this little small scalp, and then rode the rest on to history. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, Got the computer running a little slow here, so I don't want to make you hang out all day long. But uh, there was a number of you asking in the comments on the, the photo that I posted for me to break that down. Um, ask more questions in the comments below if you don't understand what I was talking about here. Uh, as you can see, even the VWAP structure that I'd put in there, those standard deviation lines, like you'd be surprised at how well those work too, just to give you a visual of, of where the market has been and where it might be going. It's kind of like, um, uh, what would you call it? It's kind of like the breadth of the market, the, the volatility level. You're like, okay, it's, it's traveling in between these certain deviations. So I know that there's that much potential movement. You know, if it's only traveling in between one deviation line, you know, the market's not moving too much and maybe your potential is not too big and you should take smaller scalps. If it's moving between multiple deviation lines, you got a lot more room to work with. Makes sense. Okay. That's it, boys. I'm out.